Hello everyone and welcome to the, the 3D game quest line, Gear Up Math and Stats in WoW. And what we're going to be discussing re really is that. We're going to be looking at World of Warcraft and we're going to be looking at exactly how you can use it for mathematics and statistics. Hello everyone, this is Chris, and I'm one of your guild officers for this quest line. And so one of the first questions that I'm sure everyone has is, well, why math and stats in World of Warcraft? Uh, one of the things you'll, you'll see is that uh, in World of Warcraft, as we'll show you later on tonight, we'll show you the game, we'll get you sort of uh, a baseline understanding, we'll throw some terminology at you, and we'll get you started thinking about how math and stats are used in this particular environment. Uh, a little bit of background for me, I've used uh, World of Warcraft in, in my accounting classes as well as my business classes to, uh, to really look at the economy that is inside the game. So actually this math and statistics makes a lot of sense to me because you see it, uh, I see it a lot as, uh, as my students see it as they've uh, worked through some of the assignments and the projects. So first of all, the main place you encounter math and stats is in a thing called game mechanics. And what we're talking about is we're talking about the actual infrastructure of the game. We're talking about how the game actually functions and how it actually works. So some examples would be attack mechanics because, you know, you can't have a game unless you attack something. Actually, there are some games that, that don't even have attacking things. However, in World of Warcraft, it does have a fight mechanic. And basically, this is a thing to think about. Like, uh, how do you, how, how do you, how are you able to hit something? That is all based on mathematics and statistics. Uh, how can an enemy hit you? How hard do you get hit? How often do you get hit? These are all things that are are based on an underlying uh, mechanical formula, a mathematical formula that's underneath. Uh, the layer that you see, because if you because you can see through our screen shares that several structure in World of Warcraft, and that you can see there's really nothing on the surface that says, "Hey, everything that you're seeing here is a mathematical rendering." And so one of the things is is that you know I also teach multimedia graphic design, but a lot of this is vector graphics as well. So you you see. Uh, some different uh, things going on. There's all this mathematic and all these algorithms that are behind the scenes telling your computer how to render the image that you see. Uh, there's also uh, things that you're doing is, is who does the target fo uh, focus on? Does the animal go after you or does it go after somebody else? And how often can you do things? Those are all things that fall into this general terminology of game mechanics. Some other areas of game mechanics is the actual physics of the space. So the physical space in the game. Uh, you know how fast you can travel, how much damage you take if you fall, uh, how much screen space. You know, uh, you're looking at my screen here with my uh, my big tune that's jumping up and down. Well, one of the things you have to look at is that this tune is actually pretty big, um, and the thing is, is that you've got to figure out depending on how much space you have, you have to figure out how you're going to actually navigate a larger uh, character through a tighter space. So not all rooms out here are this large uh, to sort of dwarf my character. And again, also how much bag space. You know, one of the things you have in all games is you have to figure out the never-ending quandary of, of how do I, what do I toss, what do I keep, how do I keep things available so I can keep gathering stuff. And so this image here you're seeing on the slideshow is actually of a boss encounter called the Merciless. And what you see is he's doing something called Swirl. And he sort of sprays a water jet around uh, basically a quarter, about, about half the room. And so uh, what you do is you can also see how large this, this particular uh, boss is, this particular creature is. Because uh, you can sort of see there's a little guy standing right here. And uh, so, I mean, that's what you see. So you sort of see a little person standing right here. This is a big, huge boss. So you see there's this scale that you're looking at. And the thing is, is a lot of what you do in the game is range-based. You have to be within a certain range of your target to be able to interact with that target whether that's talking to them or it's going ahead and it is, um, you know, just interacting with them. So the other area of, game, of math where we really start seeing math is in the assessment. So one of the nice things that goes on in World of Warcraft and other games like it uh, that allow it is a, you have a very strong culture, uh, an add-on culture. And what this is, is this is third party. Um, these are basically third party providers uh, who basically develop 
instrumentation, develop options for you to go ahead and see how well you do. And you can see how well you perform versus somebody else. So one of the main examples we always talk about when we, we look at you know, one of the most commonly used add-ons is something called recount. Now the nice thing about recount is it specifically looks at different aspects you have. So in this case I'm looking at damage and so I'm looking at what ability. So I can actually look and see here's my character, he's number, he was 11th, 11th ranked on this list. If I click on him, it gives you a nice colorful format of basically what's out there. And so uh, it's a little bit hard to see on this one, so I blew it up on the actual slide share. You can see a little bit better. So in the slide share, uh, it is not my character, it's somebody else's character, but you can see that down at the bottom here we have a list of graphics sort of gives you a, a numerical evaluation. It tells you what percent of the total uh, they accounted for. And then if you click on them like I did, you get a little breakout of all the different things that they did. So you can see you know, what acti how active they were, uh, what, what different actions they took. Uh, in this case, we're looking at damage again. So you're seeing what did the most damage, what are they relying on most. You know, so in this case, this is a mage. Uh, he, used, uh, he used a spell called Arcane Blast. Uh, he casted that uh, 44 times during the period that this data was recorded, and it accounted for 40% of his damage. And so this is good because you can look at what's going on here, and you can sort of adjust to sort of model someone who you either want to perform like, or you can go ahead and you can find out, uh, um, or someone that you don't want to perform like. So there's different things you can look at with, with this aspect. So that's recount. So some other things that are out there is everyone's favorite when it comes to gaming is loot. And so what is loot? So basically loot is, is basically all the stuff that drops off of uh, the various things that you interact with. So you can get them as quest rewards. You can get them as rewards for um, killing a boss or going out and collecting items. So the thing is, is everything in this game, everything in all, all games, it's all based off of a probability table. Typically it's called a drop table. And what it is, is it's saying, you know, what's going to drop all the time and what's not. So now we're getting into the realm of statistics here. So you start getting into, okay, now you have probability. Some things may have 100%, a guaranteed drop. It means no matter what you do, as long as you do X, Y, Z, you will get this particular thing. Um, you also have high probabilities. So this is typically around the 60 to 99% range. What that means is that, well, it's not guaranteed, but, you know, you might have to kill two things to get it instead of just one. Well, then, of course, then you have a 50-50 flip, coin flip, where, you know, it's just one of those things where you just keep on going. And then you start getting into the, the, the more desirable end, typically, is what you see, is lower probability items. So these are typically items that have a higher status or more desirable items that, that characters are looking for. So then you start getting low probability, so 5 to 40%. And then you start getting into rare uh, drops, which is 1 to 5%. And then, of course, you have this wonderful level called epics, and, and gamers, that's really like, like that's like the 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 best thing you're trying to strive for. Is you want this really epic gear because everybody, let's face it, everyone wants to be epic. Uh, so the thing is, is that that's typically less than one percent. Now remember, this is not these statistics are typically not cumulative, which means that if it's a one percent drop rate, just because you kill a hundred things, it doesn't mean you're actually going to get it. You're guaranteed to get it. And it's a one percent chance of dropping each time you kill something. So it's not cumulative. So those are things that you just have to be aware of. Uh, we all live and die by the drop table. Uh, we've all grumbled about it. We've all praised it. We've all had fun with it. We've all been, been heartbroken over it. So um, affectionately known as RNG gods, you know, the random number generator gods, um, those are different things that also affect how loot is, is dropped and distributed and things like that. In fact, one of the quest lines you'll actually talk about how do you come up with a system to, to, to distribute equitably a, a rare drop item? So the other aspect of math and law, which, which, which really where, is where a lot of players do this consciously and unconsciously. So, so, and this is the area of player optimization, otherwise known as theorycraft. And what theorycraft is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's taking a mechanic in a game like the ability to hit something, like the ability to dodge, like the ability to do more damage or do more healing. Um, and what it is is you're taking that factor and you're finding out, you know, what is the optimal way to build your character? Because after all, 
in a game like World of Warcraft, an MMORPG, you start off at a very, very low level. And then what happens is you get to the max level. So you're always doing lots and lots of self-improvement. So there's a lot of self-improvement help tasks, you know, just like there is in real life. Same thing happens in these MMORPGs. There's lots of people trying to help you out and tell you this is how you should do stuff. And what they're basing it off of is they're basing it off of the idea of theory crafting. Now what happens is, is if you can look at this game, extremely a very analytical way of looking at the game, and you start taking sample sizes, and you start tracking specific events and specific phenomena in game, you can create an algorithm. You can create a mathematical formula that will somewhat predict what's going on in the game. And so what happens is, is that some games are very open to it, they will share this with their players. Other games, the players are setting up um, different items so that way they can go ahead and they can uh, passively grab information uh, from the, the player, the player while they're playing the game so they can sort of amass and aggregate that big data and they can come up with their own drop tables and theory craft and stuff. And some of this stuff is just people sitting at their home and working out a mathematical formula and saying, this is what I think. This is my, based on my observations, this is my hypothesis. And so theorycraft is exceptionally, uh, is an exceptional example of where math statistics and gaming meet. And theorycraft exists in basically all large games that are out there. So basically for us, one of the things we're playing around with is we're going to be playing in World of Warcraft. So, um, that is definitely one of our, our places that we will be showing you. So really, what you see here on the screen, this is our laboratory. This is where we're going to do a lot of our examples. This is the example we're going to do. If you, if you don't have a character in World of Warcraft, uh, you can definitely make one. Um, but also, if you're a popular fan of another MMORPG, I guarantee you a lot of these same ideas will apply to your MMORPG uh, of choice. Uh, but again, all of our examples are going to be based out of World of Warcraft. And we also have a special guest uh, with us tonight who's actually one of the uh, guild members in Noble Trail. Uh, her name is Grid, so I'll go ahead and let Grid say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're talking, you know, I, some of this sounded so very complex. I happen to be in a K-12 setting, and it doesn't even have to be that. I, there's just numbers everywhere. I mean, you can start with the v most simplest of adding and subtracting or, you know, the bigger number is better than the little number kind of thing to, to something that is more complicated. But what strikes me about playing uh, World of Warcraft is in math and, and statistics is that you can actually apply these mathematical concepts. And so it's not just this theory of what it mm. is, it's, it becomes very real as it was being described. Well, okay. exactly, and that's one of the reasons why we did, show, we did choose World of Warcraft and, and we chose a big MMORPG like this because it is math at all levels. I mean, uh, you know, as, as, as Grid was saying, is that basically, you know, it does cover anything from basic addition um, to algebra to complex calculus. I mean, you can go as in-depth in this game as you want. And part of that is because of how expansive the game is itself. And, or you can stay very, very, um, uh, you can stay very, very, stay very, very t close to the surface where you're basically, you're not really doing a deep dive into, into extreme theory crafting. You're simply just going ahead and saying, you know, um, you know, one of the things we were talking about before the Hangout got started was saying, well, like, example would be, like, crafting, where, where you have to make an item, where it really is sort of you have to have two of these and one of this and three of these, and then you have to figure out, is it worth your time uh, <laughs> to do that and gather all that? And you have to, have, to be, have to be very exacting because if you don't get the right amount, then you will either have spent more time than you needed or you um, will not have enough to make the piece you want. So, so there's a lot of different things you can look at from a, from a wide variety of levels. And so uh, Grid is actually a member of the guild, as, as am I and as is Kay, who you heard earlier. Um, and basically, we're all part of this guild, Inevitable Betrayal. And so we'll be serving as hosts for the 3D Game Labs group. So uh, you guys do have a place in World to stay. Yay! So, uh, you know, you're definitely, thank you to Inevitable Betrayal. You'll have uh, people in game that'll be around in, in game around the clock. Typically, uh, most of us are based in the U.S., so we're typically down most times in the U.S. Uh, we do have some people from other from um, that are international as well that 
that are coming at different time frames, so that's not a problem. Um, but the thing is, is that um, you know you'll have people in there with you, so it'll be a live social environment. So feel free to say hello. I know they're going to say hello to you. Um, and that uh, the thing is, is you can feel free to ask them questions, ask me questions, uh, ask Kay, ask Grid. Uh, we're all open to, to helping you um, uh, learn about this game and get get oriented to what's going on, and, and sort of get you on your on your path to. Uh, go ahead and become the math mancers that uh, you know we've talked about that you've uh, read about already. So um, the thing is, is that um, so our host. So special thanks to, to um, the Neville Trail. So now let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the game. So we're, we've sort of given you an overview of the quest line so far, at least sort of the justification and our base basic reasons for doing things. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn around and we're going to start talking about you know, the game itself and sort of giving you a really quick orientation to the game and some different aspects of it. And then we'll also start talking about the quest line as well. Um, you know, sort of some of the things to be looking out for and sort of what does that quest line look like. So uh, I will go ahead and I will turn it over to Kay. Okay, one of the things that we're just going to go over today, and we'll go more in depth into this, is in World of Warcraft, there's basically three roles you'll be playing. And of the three roles that you can play, they have different math and stats that go with each of them. This first one that we have up here is a tank. And what a tank does is a tank absorbs the damage. So, so think of this as you know, just about any kind of battle you would think about. The tanks go in because they can go in further and they can take the damage. Well, in World of Warcraft, there are players that go ahead and they have that, and they go ahead and they have that same role. Now, the next role that we'll take a look at is called damage per second, or DPS. So you'll hear this abbreviation a lot. You'll hear DPS. And this means that these are the people who are very, who are players who are very skilled and their characters have that type that instead of taking a lot of damage, instead they're going to do a lot of damage per second. And to make this game fun in the very, at all, what happens is that people who are doing damage per second, um, they're squishier. <laughs> the statistics on their clothes do not, and equipment, do not allow them to take the same amount of damage that a tank does. So World of Warcraft is set up where you can solo, but really if you're going to be doing the gameplay at the end, you have to have all these, all these three roles and you have to have them working collaboratively. And the next role is called a healer. And a healer, um, Basically, what they do is they heal the tank and they heal the other DPS in their group to make sure that they stay alive in an encounter. So the stats that each of these three types of characters have is extremely different. The first one, tank, is stamina. So it's all about taking that damage or it's dodge where they have to be avoiding that damage. DPS you're going to want you're going to want damage per second things that are very crucial for something like that are critical strike and that is abbreviated uh, to crit by a lot of people and the and the other thing that's very important is haste now when it comes to healers healers have a, a statistic um, that they look for um, there's two of them actually one is spirit and spirit actually helps them heal. And the, uh, and the other one is going to be intellect. So depending on what role you're playing, you have to look at things very differently. And any time that, say, you would, you would get any kind of um, piece of equipment, and Grid, could you open up your character? I'm on your screen now. Could you open up your character sheet so we could just take a little bit of look at your equipment? Okay, you'll see in, in the corner there that when you look at our sheet, it has each piece on there. And, and Grid's a lower level priest, so she's a healer. And, and Grid, what level is your, 
is your healer there. It's at 32 right now. Okay, and that's the thing about it. You know, you were so right about numbers being everything and the being everywhere. We constantly, in World of Warcraft, will refer to, hey, what level is your character? What percentage of that level is your character? How, what percentage do you need to get to the next level? So something that comes up in conversation all the time is what level are you? So she's a level 32, so it wouldn't be, I would say there, it, it's not as complex at level 32 as it is at the highest level you can go, which currently is level 90. So when it comes to the statistics that she's pulling up there, these are all stats that show, okay, how fast is she going to be able to cast a spell to heal? You know, how, how quickly is her heal over time going to be? You know, how, quick, how much can she protect herself? All of those stats that are showing up on our character sheet on the right-hand side, all of those deal with how well she does in the game. In the game. So, let me pull up the next thing. And we took a screenshot of this so you could see it just a little bit better. Okay, so while Grid was a healer, what we pulled up here was what we pulled up here was a mage. And, and a mage does damage per second. And Chris wanted to talk a little bit more about the math and stats that, that go into DPS. So I'm going to hand it over to him. Okay. So, I mean, as you see on the screen here, what you can see is that there are several different pools uh, that you have. So you have a little stat bar. And uh, what it is is with a mage, one of your most important stats or your priority stats is intellect. And the reason for that is that uh, intellect really sort of sets up your ability. I mean, it really sort of dictates um, what your spell power is. In other words, how hard do you cast? It also talks about uh, crit. So in other words, how much uh, do you get chance? And actually, in most games, when you hear the word critical strike or crit, what that means is that's, that's the percentage you are able to do double your normal damage. So typically whenever you critically strike somebody, it's two times what your normal damage would be. And so that's what we're looking at here uh, with critical strike. So it's how many times can you get double the damage. And so obviously as a DPS, your goal is to get the bigger the number, the better. Um, so, so that's the different things that you, you have when you're looking at uh, the different aspects. So you can see all the different variables you have. So you have strength here. Not really useful for a mage because you're not really supposed to be hitting things over the head with your staff. You can do it. It's fun to watch. Uh, but it's not really what uh, the gamers expected you to do. Uh, next up is agility. Agility is the ability to dodge. And while some mages like the ability to dodge stuff, again, that's not really your job as a DPS. Your job is to not necessarily be uh, the focus of attack. Your job is to be able to do lots of damage really quickly. So um, stamina is a nice thing to have because uh, if you do happen to get beat on, and again, a lot of the mechanics in the game do have something called area of effect or AOE type of damage, so you'll take that. So stamina is not a bad stat to have. Uh, intellect, we already covered intellect, but intellect gives you lots of stuff, uh, lots of good stuff. Spirit is, again, one of those not-so-useful stats. Uh, it does help you with something called mana regeneration, which means uh, how fast you get your mana back um, between fights and also during during a fight. So again, your main focus is, as a mage is going to be your intellect, uh, at least as your primary stat. And then down here at the bottom of this slide, you'll see it says spell. Because you're, you're a mage, you're a magician, you're casting lots of spells, so this is actually relevant. So melee, not so relevant because, again, you should not be bonking things on the head with your staff. You can do that, but, again, it's not the most effective use of your time uh, if you're a mage. Uh, if ranged, range would be if you have a weapon and you're using it. Again, you're not using any weapons because you're a mage, you're casting, so range doesn't work either. But if you're a hunter, ranged would be what you're looking at. So next up is the spell area. So you can see here in spell, it says spell power. Spell power in, in World of Warcraft is basically how much additional damage do you do 
in addition to what your normal baseline is. So it's a little bit of a buff. So the idea is, is that with the spell power she has, uh, Master Quova, is that on top of what she normally casts, she does an additional 31,440 points of damage. Uh, in addition to that, she has 18% haste, which means that's how fast she, she can cast things 18% faster. Um, she has a 15% hit, which means that, which actually in the game of World of Warcraft, 15% is what you want. Uh, so you want to be at 15%, that means you can never miss. Uh, and then basically you see things like mana regen, combat regen. What this means is this means how well uh, Matrova can actually regenerate the mana, which is the ability that she uses to cast spells. So every, ca every spell she casts consumes a certain amount of mana. So you're starting to hear that optimization thing here, aren't you? Um, and the next thing up is crit chance. We talked about critical strike already. The idea is that uh, she has about a 19% chance of getting a double damage strike. Uh, mastery is also important. It's, a, it's an important stat to a arcane mage because what that does is that allows her to do up to 67% more damage um, if she has a higher amount of mana. So um, the thing about a, uh, an arcane mage is they have something called mana adept, which is a special ability. I know, starting to slip into geek talk here. Um, the thing about it is, is that really what's going on here is that um, that percentage um, applies and allows her to do more damage the closer she is at 100% of mana. And so as she casts spells, her mana goes down, and that means that 76% bonus she gets, um, sorry, that 67% bonus she gets keeps dwindling down. And then after a certain point, it becomes negligible, and so it would be better if she would have to decide if it's better for her to get her mana back, in other words, not cast so much, uh, or pop a potion or something to re replenish that mana, um, or if she wants to keep casting um, and let her mana keep draining. So there's different decisions that she'll have to make. And so that's just sort of an example of some of the math that we have. Because it couldn't be a math and stats in WoW presentation unless we gave you a math problem. So we decided to come up with a math problem. And so this is kind of what you see uh, for, in this case, a arcane mage. So here's our assumption. Because with every good mathematical formula, you have to be given something. You have to be given the variables so then you can solve for that problem. So here's what we have. You have a mastery rating uh, that is equivalent to give you a 10% increase based on your mana. And at your base mana, your base DPS, so we talked about a base amount, is 10,000. So this is all the math you do in your head or on a piece of scrap paper on the side. Uh, but you say you do it in the head, especially if you're doing it on a hangout because people can't really see what you're actually doing in real life. Um, so what you do is you're looking at it, you're going, okay, so... If I'm at, you know, 10% mana, then I'm only going to go ahead, I'm only going to do um, 10,100 damage because it's only a 1% increase. So basically it's 10% of the 10% increase from mana depth. Then if you're at 25% mana, you're doing 10,025. Uh, and so basically that's because it's 2.5%. So in other words, 25% of the 10%. So don't you love it whenever we do... When we do um, portions of a portion. So we do percentages of percentage. It's always fun. And then at 50% mana, you would be at 10,500. And that's because you're at 50% of 10%. And at 75%, you're at 1075. Don't you just love round numbers? Because uh, that's 7.5%. Uh, there's 75% times 10%. And then you also have, at 100% mana, you're doing 11,000. So the maximum amount, so the very first cast this mage would cast would be at 11, would be doing 11,000. Now, the thing is, is that the mages can have lots of fun with this because you're playing around doing a lot of different things. So you have, you have things that you can do to help increase your mana. And so um, you have different options with that. So some people, um, they want to go ahead and they want to make sure that they go ahead and they... Um, have a more gradual application of getting that mana back. So in other words, instead of having the mana back in one big chunk, they want to have their mana back um, over time. So they, they have the ability to do that as a mage, where you can choose whether you want a quick fix, where you get your mana in a big chunk right off the bat, or you can get it where it's sort of spread out over time. 
So you can, you can constantly be building up mana as you're expending it. Of course, your, your job as a math mancer would be looking at how do you balance that ratio. And there's lots of discussions on that as well. So this is just some of the examples of the different math and wow that's there. Um, and so these are things that you have to think about. And this is some stuff we're going to start talking about on uh, next on, on the seventh coming up. Uh, we'll be having the the, the presentation. Uh, we'll go. We'll be again a, a very basic, another sort of. Eh, it wouldn't be a basic because this is really the basics. It'll be more of a little bit of intermediate look at the whole whole bit there, um, and that'll be on Saturday. Uh, and then we also have another one that we go into more near intermediate, and so that's what we'll be using these hangouts for, to sort of suck you in and make you do more and more of this theory craft, because we really like it. Uh, so <laughs> well, if I can interject, this sure. is so aligned to Common Core State Standards and computational thinking, because you're actually applying, you know, it's not just adding and subtracting numbers or, or figuring out the percentage of another of numbers that are meaningless. You're, you're actually solving a problem, and the solving of the problem can be done in multiple ways. So that mage can achieve the task uh, that, that is given to that mage to, to help to kill that boss that kill the bad person or the bad monster um, and they can do it in different ways and the, the problem solving that's involved in, incorporates this mathematics but it's much more meaningful because of course there's a task and there's an application of the math which is totally aligned to common core state standards you know, computational thinking and problem solving. Yeah no, definitely I mean I'm, I was looking at some of the the competencies I have in um, a lot of my, my classes, my area is in CTE, and we have um, some different classes that have a mathematical. And so this is a lot of what we're looking at. We're looking at how do you do optimization, whether it's production optimization, or if you're going ahead and um, uh, looking at any sort of performance optimization as well. So um, this, is a, a more, uh, this is a fun way to sort of look at it and say, okay, you might not know how to do this in real life because maybe you don't have the work experience on it. But I know some of you may play a game like this, um, and these are some things to think about. So once you give the students, uh, for those of you that are educators, once you give the students the, the ability to go ahead and start looking at that, and you give them this practice example, they will start making the connection saying, oh, I don't do that, but there's something similar in that I have to do this, this, and this. And so that's the thing about it is you can really sort of get back to that relevant stage where you're talking about a very complex idea, you know, critical thinking. How do you, you know, when do you decide to pop you know, when you decide to go ahead and replace your mana up to a certain point, what points do you go ahead and do it? Especially when you have to deal with the wonderful world of cooldowns, which we'll talk about on Saturday. And those are things that, that basically means that you can't do things until like a minute expires or 30 seconds expires or whatever. So those are things you're always constantly looking at. And so there's all this math going on and all this stuff that you have to understand that once you get at this level, because I mean that's the other thing about this. The other thing about this is that most people who are playing around in this arena are at max level. They're not worried about this as much when you're going from level one and on your journey to the end game or to the max level. So the idea is is that um, most games do a really good job of scaffolding that information because they don't try to dump all of this on you at once. Um, this is stuff that comes after you're playing a game. You start noticing things like this, and you start adapting to it. So like I said, this is that's what I'm referring to is a lot of that sort of that math that's sort of under the surface of everything, where you're not consciously looking at math, you're not consciously thinking about math, but in the back of your head, your brain's working through the equation, and you're going, oh yes, I found out through trial and error, it's better if I hit it every five seconds, and then after a while, you go, well, this is the reason why I'm hitting it every five seconds. So, so that's the thing that's out there is that you have a lot of this this math that's going on, and and like I said, as you continue on through this quest line, we'll start bringing that more to the surface. So, I'm going to turn it back to Kay, and Kay's going to talk about. So, where do gamers get all this time from? You know, what's going on with that? Okay, um, this is a question we get a lot, and and we get a lot from teachers going, oh, I couldn't possibly play, or I don't know where the students get the time to do this. Well, we'll, we'll tell you where they get the time. Where they get the time is, if any of you read either Clay Shirky's book or listen to his TED talk, really the term is cognitive surplus. 
So this is a time that you, that you or your students would normally, like say 10, 20 years ago, would be watching TV. And I know some of you might say something like, oh, I only watch PBS. <laughs> or say, oh, but I read books. I'm willing to bet you know the every single word to at least one theme song from a 70s, 80s, or 90s TV show. So if you're wondering what happened to that cognitive surplus, that's exactly what happened to the cognitive surplus. And what's happening now is instead of watching TV, um, what's happening is, is the population is starting to go into a different form of ent entertainment, which is games. And as you can see, with games like this, it does, it does take us over to look at possibly other things. Now, when you've been listening to these numbers, you might be thinking about something else. You might be thinking about maybe when you were growing up, that guy who worked on muscle cars, who knew, you know, the gearhead, who knew exactly the right torque, exactly the right part, and all the numbers and stuff like that. It's like that. Or did you happen to have a friend who knew all the stats for a certain baseball team or a football team and could recall everything? Well, rather than just being passive, say, you know, say spectators, games really allow us the opportunity to get more involved in that. So that's what we're going to have you do. We're going to have you take a look at it at math and stats in WOW, which is a pastime. People who are optimizing are totally using this as a pastime, but they're totally also concentrating on the numbers. So we want you to think over that, and we'll just go over the quest line really quickly for you. And the quest line, just so you remember, four hangouts, and this one is included. And we'll do gear up the basics on Saturday. The Saturday after that, we'll be talking about the item level 50, 550 challenge. And we're going to, for that one, what we're going to have you do is we're going to have you look at our guild. And we're going to have you look at our guild and see if there's anything going on there that you might be able to help us out with. So what I'm bringing up now is a re one of the resources you will be using, and you'll be using a lot of resources. Um, this one is actually on World of Warcraft. You just go into the community, and there you can either look up a character by name or a guild. And you can go ahead and look up our guild. Funny that that's filled out already. Come over here, and there is a lot of inevitable betrayal guilds but we're on Sisters of Elune. So you click on that, and then it starts giving you information and stats. Like all this recent news here, all of this is saying who's gotten what piece of equipment, and it's telling you exactly what the item level is on this equipment. Let's go down here. This one to the ring. This one. 1,022 stamina, 682 intellect. That's going to be for one of Grid's characters, her character who happens to be a warlock who is a caster. Now, the thing of it is, we'll have you going and looking at that 550 challenge. And 550 is about the highest, uh, you can get higher than that, but it's kind of a really high benchmark for characters to get. And we'll have you come over to the roster, and then we'll have you look at our level 90s, which is the highest level. See all the numbers that keep coming up here? Level 90, and we'll have you go ahead and we'll have you click on one of these, and we'll have you look at what they would need to get to the next highest level. So we were just talking about Gridlocked, who just made level 90. If we click on her, we will see her item level here is 476, but we're going to be having you do the 450 challenge instead. So we'll have you looking at these things. And then our last hangout, they were calling the Rise of the Mathomancer. And, and like I said, it's the 550 challenge. If I mistakenly said 450, 
uh, apologize, but it's a 550 challenge. Then the other quest lines we're going to have you doing are introducing yourself. We'll have you um, get a welcome to the guild. We'll have you looking at lots of different variables, and we'll be showing you a lot of things that you're going to have to understand if you are going to be doing this kind of applied mathematics and statistics. So, as far as upcoming events, um, the next one is Saturday. And that's Gear Up. And we'll be going more into depth about what we were doing. And basically, that's all we have for you. And when it comes to questions or discussions, I'll see if my collaborators want to jump on and say anything to end. Otherwise, we're going to go to the Shifter Forum for 3D Game Lab, and we'll take the questions there. No, I do not have any questions, so I look forward to hearing uh, from everyone and uh, looking at the discussions that go on in the Shifter account, and we'll see you guys, and it'll be a lot of fun over the next three weeks. So I will see you on the Shifter boards and in-game. No questions here. I look forward to seeing the, uh, the quest line progress. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and like we said, we will have you looking at our guild to give the recommendations and advice um, to, to our guild. So thank you very much, and good night.